Come on, Lego. You gotta be kidding me, man. You're overreacting. It's been two bad games, and all of a sudden it's time to make a panic meltdown video about Jacob Markstrom, the number one Calgary Flames starting netminder. Well, let me just tell you right here. This video is less about Markstrom and only Markstrom, because it also is a lot about the Calgary Flames themselves, because, uh, yeah, the Calgary Flames, oh boy, they're not great. They're, uh, really not great. And I know, it's only been two games, but it's gotten to a point now where the Calgary Flames, in the position they are in right now, are one of the more inconsistent teams in this Canadian division. And it's gotten to a point now where I think most teams in the Canadian division have started feeling waves of frustration hitting them. Vancouver is a team that can be absolutely terrible some nights, but can look very good other nights. Montreal is starting to come down back to earth. Toronto had the embarrassing losses against Ottawa like twice. You have the Edmonton Oilers and the Winnipeg Jets who are also kind of losing games sometimes in a way that they probably would prefer not to. Calgary is in that boat, and then you have Ottawa, who is just Ottawa, so they're kind of feeling disappointment all the time now, aren't they? But the Flames are in a spot now where they are indeed one of the teams that is not qualified for the playoffs if the playoffs started today. And the way Jacob Markstrom has been treated, the guy who was brought in here on a 6x6 six six contract to be the best starting goalie this team has had since Mika Kiprasoft was supposed to be the anchor, the guy you could rely on last. When all things go wrong up front, Jacob Markstrom's the last man back, the last man standing to keep you in the game. But Jacob Markstrom just got absolutely tortured yesterday by the Edmonton Oilers, allowing 5 goals on 15 total shots for a 6-6-7 six, six, save percentage before getting pulled halfway through the game. He also got pulled the previous game he started against the Vancouver Canucks, where he gave up five goals on 29 shots for an 8-2-8 save percentage. Jacob Markstrom hasn't been great lately, and it's so weird because we saw some little hints as to the actual conditioning of Markstrom in the first game where he was bad, against Vancouver, where he started to pinch out a little bit, tried to trip the guys as they were chasing for the puck. He did it to Tanner Pearson successfully, against Bo Horvat it didn't work, and they ended up being a goal against. This is what Drancer said about the matter that I think is really indicative of what actually has been going on in Markstrom's psyche the past few games as indicated by those actions. That was a sick read, but when Jacob Markstrom gets chasey, both positionally and in terms of his puck handling decisions, it tends to be a sign that he's tired. The game against Vancouver was his seventh straight start. And to be fair, hey, he was honestly pretty okay in those seven straight starts. He had a record of 4, 3, and 0 oh in those starts, which was, I mean, it's above 500, but like, if you take away the game that he had against Vancouver, in the six games he played, he was 4 and 2. So that's very good, actually, for Markstrom. One goal against, two goals against, three goals against, and one of the losses. So he's not bad, for sure. It's just, for Jacob Markstrom, he's a guy who, in the previous two games has been completely hung out to dry by a bad, terribly defensively disciplined Calgary Flames team. Against Vancouver, they were given up opportunities left and right, and towards the end of that second period, that's really when things started to pile down defensively for the Flames, where they allowed JT Miller to come in with a nice shot, where they allowed Nate Schmidt to have a nice play in front, where they just allowed these grade-A chances to go in. And to be fair, I guess the Miller goal probably was just a very good goal scored by a very good snipe on a very good goaltender who was in very good position, but still, it went in. The passing lane shouldn't have been available there from Petey to Miller. That's on the D. Then in the third period, it was obviously, you know, the four-on-one rush that Besser took it. He sniped it on Markstrom, and then he got pulled afterwards because obviously he did. Markey just did not make the clutch saves that he could have because the defense hung him out the dry. And the same thing happened against Connor McDavid yesterday. McDavid scored five points in the first 30 minutes of the game, all on Jacob Markstrom, including a hat trick. 
These were incredibly tough goals for Jacob Marks from the stub. First off, it's a McDavid pass out in front that gets tipped out back door past Markstrom. Okay, that's tough for the goalie to stop. Secondly, it was a cross crease where McDavid is in the corner and he sends it over to Nugent Hopkins, who's right there with no coverage on the left side of the goal. Then you have the three McDavid goals after. First, it's a tip. That's tough for goalies to stop. Secondly, it's a rush where McDavid absolutely embarrasses everybody on the Calgary Flames, just doing it all himself and dangling by the guy. And then the third goal, McDavid is just allowed to come over from behind the net, out in front, unscathed, and Markstrom is forced to be in an awkward position to make a save on a shot that he really should not have been able to face because the Calgary D should have been a little bit more aggressive and McDavid scores. So five goals on Markstrom. He gets pulled, and now we're taking a look at it, and Markstrom, you know, I don't want to make it seem like he's a problem. He's definitely not. There are a lot of other problems with the Flames, but Markstrom is one of the pieces that is involved in this Flames team that is indeed starting to lose. And for Canucks fans, I've been seeing some of them, even on the subreddit. I saw somebody on the subreddit talk about how, oh, could Jacob Markstrom become the Louis Erickson of goaltenders and haunt the Calgary Flames for the next six years? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to say that for sure. It's only been a quarter of a season. We're just barely past the starting time of this Jacob Markstrom contract. But it's just so weird to me because we have all these rumors coming about with the Calgary Flames, how players are looking for change and how people want things to go in a better direction that it's almost like rebuilding isn't an option here. You cannot rebuild if you're the Calgary Flames right now. Why? Here's why. You guys just went all in signing these big, beefy contracts to these big, beefy players that are going to supposedly help you make a push in the playoffs. Chris Tanev, Jacob Markstrom. You guys brought these guys in from Vancouver. Very good, top-tier, talented players who are in their primes now. Markstrom is locked down 6 by 6 why do you sign players to 6x6 six six contracts that are in their primes and that you're looking to help you in the short-term and long-term future? Why? Because you guys think you're contenders. You do that for Chris Tanev too. That's four years. He's going to be sticking around for a while as well. You sign these players so you have the Gaudreaux, the Monahans, and the Lindholms up front, and you have the Tanevs and the Giordanos and the Markstrom to back you up on the back end. You want to be competitive. So when you have these contracts that you just add, what sense is there to go out there the year after and say, okay, gone. Everybody's getting traded. We're going to get picks. We're going to get prospects. We're going to rebuild, boys. Let's go. Calgary Flames 2025. Let's get it, boys. Do you see how sensical that is to make these big contract acquisitions the offseason before in order to change your direction one year later? It's not possible. You're not going to be able to do that. It's unpleasant for the guys that you promised to have playoff success and playoff contention with in Tanev and Markstrom. But now, the way this team is playing, you guys are in a position now where you're one of the worst teams in Canada. I wouldn't be surprised if the Flames missed out on the playoffs this year with Ottawa and with Vancouver. And it's just unfortunate to see because the guys that are getting the rough end of this, hey, it's Jacob Markstrom. Markstrom giving up how many goals? 10 goals in his previous two games in however many minutes of ice time he's played 47 plus 28, 67, 75. So a game and a half, a game and a period pretty much he's played. He's allowed 10 goals. Yeah, he's been overworked. He's been overworked. And I get that there might be some Flames fans in the comments section below asking, hey, you know, Lego, you've seen Markstrom play for the better half of his entire tenure in Vancouver. How do you feel about Jacob Markstrom? You don't want to play Markstrom when he's tired. You want to give this guy rest. You want to allow him to recuperate. And Markstrom, it's strange because when he starts doing poorly, it's really tough for Markstrom to get out of those slumps. It's tough. Like, this guy is a guy who, when he plays and he starts letting in goals and goals and goals, it's just so much easier for him to allow more goals. It's like you can watch his demeanor on the ice. When you know that a game is starting to become a little bit out of reach, it's almost like he gives up on the play. He's not as agile. He's not as fast as he was before. He starts making weird decisions. He starts going out and trying to challenge skaters who are coming in on breakaways. Like, this play against Tanner Pearson and Bo Horvat, where he came out and he charged the skater, it's happened before in Vancouver. The most recent one, I believe it was that Anaheim overtime loss. And you heard me right, overtime. Jacob Mark did that in overtime against Ryan Getzlaff, who came in on a breakaway on an empty net and he scored. It was like 2-1 and the Canucks lost on the road. It was an embarrassing loss and a lot of that had to do with the Jacob Markstrom thing at the end. So 
you know, it's funny. It's really funny because when Jacob Marsham is at his best, he is one of the best goalies in the league. He is so good, so agile, so attentive. It's why he was fourth in the Vezina voting last season. But there are still some very big flaws to his game that do pop up once in a while. And when he's going on cold streaks, boy, you really start to see those flaws come out. And that's as a guy who's watched him for the past few years, watched him as a very good goaltender for the past two years. So... Yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on Markstrom. I don't think he's a problem in Calgary. I think there are a lot of other problems the Flames have. But when you have a play style that relies so much on Markstrom bailing you out over and over and over again, it's just a matter of time before that damn cracks. And we saw that sometimes here in Vancouver. It's just a question now as to how long it's going to take to rebuild the wall that is Jacob Markstrom. So, talk to me in the comments what you thought about this video topic. Also, check out the YouTube channel about 6pm PST because we're probably going to be hype streaming for Vancouver Winnipeg. I'll answer your chat questions. Let's have a good time. Let's hang out and talk about hockey halves, Canucks, Flames, whatever you want to talk about. We'll have ourselves a ball, but I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye. <laughs>